We found that the Martian air was less than 1% as dense as ours and made mostly of carbon dioxide. There were smaller amounts of nitrogen, argon, water vapor, and oxygen. And there was almost no ozone, so the surface was not protected from the sun's ultraviolet light as it is on Earth. On the warmest days, it was distinctly chilly. And every night, the temperatures plunged to 100 below. In winter, the surface was dusted with a thin layer of frost. The landing sites were chosen because they were safe and flat. Even so, Viking revolutionized our knowledge of this rusty world. I would, of course, have been surprised to see a grizzled prospector emerge from behind a dune, leading his mule. Yet, the idea seemed strangely appropriate. But at least while we were watching, no prospector wandered by. We studied with exceptional care every picture the cameras radioed back, but there was no hint of the canals of Barsoom, no sultry princesses, no ten-foot-tall green fighting men, no thoats, no footprints, not even a cactus or a kangaroo rat. Perhaps there was life inside the rocks or under the ground. If so, it had left no traces. For most of its history, the Earth had microbes, but no living things big enough to see. Perhaps the same is true for Mars. The Viking lander is a superbly instrumented and designed machine. It extends human capabilities to other and alien landscapes. By some standards, it's about as uh, smart as a grasshopper. By others, only as intelligent as a bacterium. There's nothing demeaning in these comparisons. It took nature hundreds of millions of years to evolve a bacterium and billions of years to make a grasshopper. With only a little experience in this sort of business, we're getting pretty good at it. In both landing sites, in Chrysi and Utopia, we've begun to dig the sands of Mars. On a very small scale, such trenches are the first human engineering works on another world. The robot arm retrieves soil samples and deposits them into several sifters. Then, the soil is carried to five experiments, two on the chemistry of the soil, and three to look for microbial life. The Viking biology experiments represent a pioneering first effort in the search for life on another world. The results are tantalizing, annoying, provocative, stimulating, and deeply ambiguous. By criteria established before launch, two of the three Viking microbiology experiments seem to have yielded positive results. First, when Martian soil samples are mixed together with an organic soup from Earth, something in the soil seems to have broken the food down, almost as if there were little Martian microbes which metabolized, enjoyed the soup from Earth. Second, when gases from Earth were mixed together with Martian soil, something seems to have chemically combined the gases with the soil, almost as if there were little Martian microbes capable of synthesizing organic matter from atmospheric gases. But the situation is complex. Mars is not the Earth. As the legacy of Percival Lowell reminds us, we are liable to be fooled. Perhaps, the ultraviolet light from the sun strikes the Martian surface and makes some chemical which can oxidize foodstuffs. 
perhaps there is some catalyst in the Martian soil which can combine atmospheric gases with the soil and make organic molecules. The red sands of Mars were excavated seven times at the two different landing sites, as distant from each other as Boston is from Baghdad. Whatever was giving these results was probably all over Mars, but was it life or just the chemistry of the soil? Studies suggest that a kind of clay known to exist on Mars can serve as a catalyst to accelerate, in the absence of life, chemical reactions which resemble the activities of life. It may be that in the early history of the Earth, before life, there were little cycles, chemical cycles running in the soil, something like photosynthesis and respiration, which were then incorporated by biology once life arose. There may be life elsewhere than in the two small sites we examined, or perhaps there's life of a different sort all over Mars. Life is just a kind of chemistry of sufficient complexity to permit reproduction and evolution. I wonder if we'll ever find a specimen of life based not on organic molecules, but on something else, something more exotic. The Viking experiments found that the Martian soil is not loaded with organic remains of once living creatures. Maybe the reactive chemistry of the surface has destroyed organic molecules, molecules based on carbon. Or maybe there's no life on Mars and all Viking found was a funny soil chemistry. Or maybe there's life okay, but it's not based on organic chemistry as much as life is on Earth. Personally, I don't think that's a very likely possibility. I'm a carbon chauvinist. I freely admit it. Carbon is tremendously abundant in the cosmos, and it makes marvelously complex organic molecules that are terrifically good for life. I'm also a water chauvinist. It's an ideal solvent for organic molecules, and it stays liquid over a very wide range of temperatures. But sometimes I wonder, could my fondness for these materials have anything to do with the fact that I'm chiefly made up of them? Are we carbon and water based because these materials were abundant on the early Earth, the time of the origin of life? Might life elsewhere be based on different stuff? 